Hey guys, this is part one of five in my tutorial on how to solve a Rubik's Cube blindfolded. Um, this video is going to be just an overview of blind solving and of the different parts of this tutorial. Um, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about letter schemes and orientation, two concepts that are very simple but extremely important for blindfolded solving. So about blind solving in general. A few things that people think. Um, the first is that you need a very good memory to be able to blind solve. This is not true at all. The cube only has 20 pieces and so using the letter scheme memorization that I'm going to teach you, uh, you will only need to memorize 20 letters to solve the cube. And if that sounds like a lot right now, it won't once you learn how this uh, memorization can be done. Um, and the other thing uh, is that People often think you need a very good memory to be able to do a fast blind solve. This is even less true because the faster you are, the less of your memory you need to use since you will be remembering your memorization for less time once you can execute it faster. So really, it, the hardest blind solve you will ever do is your first, and every time after that it will get easier and easier um, as you get faster. Um, you also don't need to be a particularly good speed cuber to solve a cube blindfolded. I only averaged about 30 seconds when I did my first blindfolded solve, and I don't even think you need to be that fast. If you have a good understanding or even a basic understanding of how, of how the pieces move around on the cube, uh, you should be totally fine. Um, you obviously, of course, need to know the notation, but that is very easy to learn if you don't know it yet. Um, okay, so my goal with this tutorial is to give people the tools they need to get sub 2 um, at blind solving. I think that most people using the techniques I teach can get sub 2 um, and, that, and that only a, a slightly smaller number um, can use these techniques to get sub 130. Um, I mean, there are obviously other factors that apply to it like um, turning speed, but um, there's nothing... There's nothing too complicated about doing a blind solve in a minute and a half, uh, even though it might seem like it. Um, I think the reason why n more people aren't that fast um, are because is because um, a lot of tutorials uh, don't prepare people properly to um, to become that fast. Um, so my goal with this tutorial is to give people uh, the upper hand in memorization as well as execution because a lot of the tutorials I've seen, such as Zane's tutorial, which I learned from, uh, did an extremely good job teaching the execution aspect of things, um, the methods used for solving it. Um, however, it was kind of loose on memorization and I had to figure out a lot of things about memorization on my own. Um, and so the way in which this tutorial is going to be different from other tutorials is that I'm going to teach you how to memorize first and then from there it'll be very easy to learn how to execute. So there might be times when you feel a little bit disoriented in the memorization um, because you don't know how to execute yet, but um, I assure you that it will all make sense once you understand how the execution works. Um, and so, yeah, I think, so basically with this tutorial, you can get sub 130. Um, most likely, I got my first sub 1 using the techniques that I'm going to teach in these videos. And then once you're around, you know, sub 130, uh, really the best you can do from there is learn 3 style uh, if you're willing to take the next step, which is actually more of a leap because 3 style is a fairly large commitment. But fortunately for you, M2 and Old Pachman are both very, very fine execution methods which uh, make it possible to be sub-130 without learning lots of um, crazy commutator techniques. Um, okay, so I'm going to start with uh, orientation. So in when you blind solve, you're going to hold the cube in a specific orientation for every solve that you do. I hold the cube with blue on top and red in front because I learned from Zane's tutorial um, which taught which in which Zane held the cube with this orientation because that's his orientation. You can choose whatever orientation you want. You can choose the one with the colors that you find most pleasing. You can choose this orientation if you think that um, it'll make watching this series easier for you. 
Um, I know a lot of people choose to, to solve with white on top, green in front, um, because that is the WCA scrambling orientation. Um, and so there's a good chance that in competition, you will get the cube in this orientation. Um, I sort of wish that I had started with this one, uh, so that I didn't have to fumble for my orientation quite so often. Although, there are techniques for finding your orientation that make it easy if you get white on top, green in front, such as just turning it the same way every time. But that's besides the point. So, um, this is, anyway, this is my orientation, and the key to an orientation is just knowing it extremely well. Um, I, I always know that blue's on top, red's in front, yellow's on the right, orange is in back, white is on the left, and green is on the bottom. And if you said to me, where is the, where is the yellow sticker of the yellow, blue, orange corner, I could instantly point right there. Um, and that's just because... I know I know my orientation very well. So just I recommend choosing your orientation, sticking with that orientation, and studying it uh, so that you can so that you can uh, find the colors very easily. So one test is to one test is to scramble your cube and then look at a piece and then point to where that piece needs to go. So that's actually so that's actually one thing you need to do in memorization is uh, you need to is you need to point to is you need to start from one piece uh, move like find the location that that piece needs to go to so here since I see green orange I instantly know I need to go here because that's the green spot of the green orange piece and if I started here I would know immediately to go there so um, the next video is going to be on memorization but this is just a little taste of that um, so so just knowing knowing instantly where a color on your cube is, um, I'm just solving this right now, is a very important skill to have um, because, because of how memorization works. Um, so just, yeah, choose an orientation and learn it. That's really all there is to it. Uh, you will become very familiar with your orientation over time. So the other thing that I'm going to talk about is letter scheme, which is even more important than orientation because that's sort of the um, the building blocks of your memorization. So I use a very standard SPEFS memorization scheme, which um, which just goes like this. You start in the upper left-hand corner of the top face, and you go around each face starting from the top left clockwise. So A, B, C, D. E, then onto the left, E, F, G, H, then the front, I, J, K, L, then the right, M, N, O, P, then the back, Q, R, S, T, and then the bottom, U, V, W, X. So one thing to note about this sort of lettering scheme is that you start on the top left of each side, but if you look at the back, Q is right here, or Q is the first letter of the back, and it's right here. Uh, and it seems like it's the top right, but you have to imagine that if you were looking right at it, it would be the top left. Um, and so, you again, you can choose whatever letter scheme you want. Um, I found this one very simple, so I just learned it immediately when I found it. Um, uh, I mean, you can make your own crazy letter scheme. The most important thing is that you are able to learn it and understand it. Edges are, edges are just like corners, except you start at the top of each face. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H... I J K L M N O P Q R S T U V W X. So, just like your orientation, and it's even more important than your orientation, you need to know your letter scheme very well. For example, you could say to me O, and I can instantly know it's this corner sticker and this edge sticker. And you can say T, and I instantly know it's this corner sticker and this edge sticker. Um, and likewise, you should be able to look at any piece and immediately know what the letter is, um, also, which is which is something that comes with a lot of practice, but it's something you should keep in mind as you are as you are practicing. Um, and so yeah, just find yourself a memorization, a letter scheme that you like. If you don't have any preference towards it, um, I recommend the SPEF scheme, which just goes goes around each face um, and then around the cube. Um, and yeah, so one technique that I find helps a lot of beginners uh, with their lettering scheme, it's actually something that I did when I was first starting out with a letter scheme. Uh, I, 
you'll have to find your own equivalent if you're not using a SPEF scheme, but with SPEFs, what you can do is you can just learn the first letter of each face. So uh, if you're going every four letters like I do, it goes A, E, I, M, Q, U. And so if you know that the top starts with A, the left starts with E, the front starts with I, the right starts with M, the back starts with Q, and the bottom starts with U, you can very quickly figure out where any letter is. For example, I could say K. I know that's a little bit after I, so okay, I'll start at I, I, J, K. And that's a lot faster than having to go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, obviously. So, so yeah, A, E, I, M, Q, U, if you decide to go with my letter scheme, um, you'll have to come up with your own equivalent if you come up with your own. So, um, becoming familiar with your orientation and your letter scheme will make memorization a lot easier than um, if you don't do that first. So again, you might be confused why I'm asking you to uh, learn some of these things, but once you learn how to memorize and execute, it will all become very clear. So um, that's all for this video. Um, I hope that, hope that you're not too daunted by the task of doing a blind solve because I'm guessing that by the end of this series, um, all of you will be able to do one fairly easily. If you have any questions, leave them below. And um, yeah, thanks for watching.